Good morning. This is Father Fish, and today we will attempt the impossible. Lucas threw down a challenge, Lucas at LRB, to detail protozoan micro animals in the fish tank. Well, we've been promoting the deep substrate ever since the beginning. So I thought it would be appropriate to merge the two. To talk about micro animals in the substrate. Now you can see in the tank alongside us, there's about six inches of substrate, which makes it perfect to be able to illustrate the point. This is a 200 gallon tank that contains a variety of small cichlids, primarily small cichlids. Um, you'll see some of them undoubtedly swimming around. But the bottom of this tank is about a six inch substrate. Now this tank has been set up for seven or eight years and the substrate has not been changed in all that time. I can show you close-ups of it but it's really not going to tell you anything. I do have uh, a couple of microscopes and camera fittings for them so at some point after I cross the threshold, I will begin doing microscopic uh, graphics on my uh, videos. For now, I just want to explain the concept so that you get a real sense of what's involved in this substrate. Most people believe that the substrate is essentially dead. Might have a little bit of bacteria in it that breaks down waste, but that's about it. Nothing, of course, could be further from the truth. This substrate is loaded with animal life from top to all the way to the bottom. Now, the kind of animals that live in it, there's a variety. There are basically six different kinds. Now, it's real easy to get lost in the woods here. So I'm going to kind of skim the surface and not try to get into any detail about the types of bacteria or the classification of the phytoplankton. Su suffice it to say, there's bacteria living from the very top all the way to the bottom. And there are micro animals such as protozoa, algae, rotifers, gastros, and worms living essentially in the top half. Why the top half? Because the top half gets oxygen. Much below that and there's no oxygen. All of the protozoans require oxygen to survive. The worms, the gastros, the rotifers, the algae, all of the protozoan, they all require oxygen. So they're not going to go much below the oxygen level. Now, certain protozoa like paramecium, amoebas, those kinds of things, they can sense the presence of oxygen. So if they get down a little too far and there's no oxygen, they'll dip back up. Some of them live right on that line, right above and below. And their bacteria live in the same region. Their bacteria live in both aerobic and anaerobic. 
aerobic is up, that's oxygen, and aerobic is down, that's no oxygen. The bacteria eat what the protozoan produce as waste. The protozoan eat what the fish and the worms, the annelids, and the rotifers produce as waste, as well as the algae. So the rotifers are the last line between themselves and the bacteria. There are two kinds of bacteria. There's bacteria that live in the presence of oxygen, aerobic bacteria, and there is anaerobic bacteria that live below the level of the oxygen. Essentially, the only thing that's living in this bottom portion below the oxygen is anaerobic bacteria. The purpose of which is to break down the final stages of the waste into elements that the plant roots can take up as nutrition and grow out. It also produces nitrogen, which is a gas, which is released into the air. That's the bubbles you see. And nitrous oxide, laughing gas, if, if you will. That's similarly, it's what keeps the fish happy. It's well, it produced up through the water column into the atmosphere. So, a fish creates waste. Plants die and create waste. The animals living at this top layer consume that waste and, and their waste is deposited a little more deeply in the substrate. Below that, algae and protozoan live and they consume that waste. When, they, when it's released, it's released essentially as non-organic material, which the bacteria picks up. That's what nitrifying bacteria is. It picks up non-organic material, such as ammonia, and converts it to, uh, to nitrites. The, night, the, the, uh, the bacteria below the anaerobic layer, in the anaerobic layer, take that nitrate and create of it nitrogen, nitrous oxide, which permeates up through the water column, making the fish happy, and gases off into the environment. So there's, there's a world of life going on in this substrate. The deeper the substrate, the more those animals can stratify themselves and perform their unique functions. So a uh, substrate that's 12 inches deep is going to do more than a substrate that's 6 inches deep. Oh, excuse me. One that is six inches deep is going to do more than one that is three inches deep. Much below three inches, and you're just really wasting your time. You may as well have a bare bottom, bare bottom tank, because you won't be able to create the anaerobic layer that's needed in order to do that final breakdown and the final conversion in order to have a fully cycling tank. Now there's the system. If you get the concept, then you'll understand that you're keeping as much life going through this substrate as you are in the water column. Which is to say that if you put toxins, strong poisons, medications we call them, in this top substrate, 
the likelihood is you're going to kill all of the microbiology living down in here. Once you do that, then the tank is foul. And it will take an extended period of time for it to come back. One more thing I want to mention, and that is, where does the bacteria come from? I use soil as the bottom layer in my substrate. And the reason I do is because soil is rich in bacteria and protozoan cysts. So when you put that in there, cap it with sand to keep it from releasing into the water, and then add water to it, those bacteria immediately thrive. The protozoan burst their shells and begin living in that environment. So by putting soil in the tank, in your substrate, you're bringing all of the bacteria and all of the protozoan into the system that it needs in order to be able to survive. Well, that's a, a bit of an undertaking, trying to get through some of that. It's really a little more than an introduction, but I hope it gives you the idea that your substrate is, a, is living organisms. It's a living environment, and it requires as much care as the water above it. Have a lovely day. This is Father Fitch, signing off. Bye for now.